Things are getting uh, rough on Wall Street here on this Friday afternoon. Now, today is a little bit more notable than other days because there's many different things that are affecting our markets. You have the Fed, you have bank earnings, you have Middle East baby mama drama, you have money going into safe haven assets, and the VIX, well, let's not even get started on the VIX, soaring well over 20%. Here on the day today, it looks like hedge funds, institutions, money managers, and retail investors are all feeling a bit of fear today. What's going on? What do you need to know? We'll get into it here in this video. The only thing I ask is you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. It's free 99. It costs you absolutely nothing to do so. And let's get started. So the NASDAQ today is down about 1.6%. You were down close to about 1.9%. It's not quite the end of the day. I expect a sell-off will continue into the end of the day because there's a lot of risk and volatility heading into this weekend and i will say while there's many things affecting the markets today the biggest by far in my personal opinion is this baby mama drama in the middle east so here's the deal okay the markets in regards to conflict that they always react pretty fearful at first before anything happens. Now, after something happens, most of the time, you tend to get a buy the news event because the markets always go to the worst case scenario, the full on war scenario. Anything less than that, markets tend to rally after, you know, war fears. Now, this situation is ever more complicated leave the politics out of it, Israel kind of messed up um, hitting the embassy in terms of greater conflict. Iran's forced to do something similar, and then Israel's going to do something similar back, more than likely, and you get into this tit for tat that could very, I don't want to say very likely, but have a very real possibility of spreading into a larger conflict, and that is a slippery slope. Now, this situation in the Middle East, it's a little bit more important for the markets on a monetary basis because of oil. Now, I've pointed out this before here on the channel. The Strait of Hormuz. This is by far the most important oil choke point in the world. And I've shown you guys this before here on the channel, but I'll pull it up again because why not? The markets are freaking out about this again today. This is an interactive uh, image of oil tankers and the flow of oil tankers uh, throughout this region of the world, essentially this portion of the world. And it, it all basically stems from the Strait of Hormuz. You have Iraq, you have Saudi Arabia, you have Oman, you have... Um, uh, all, all of these oil producing countries, Iran as well. And if there's conflict in this region, likely that slows down to some degree the flow of oil globally. And that's a problem for oil prices. Now, oil prices rising, that's a problem for the Fed. That's a problem for inflation. Unfortunately, that's not really something the Fed can can have an effect on, but oil rising, it affects everything. It affects this Blistex that I have to continuously use because my lips are breaking and literally bleeding. This chocolate, this phone, you know, this mouse or those cookies, doesn't matter what it is. I didn't make it. It got transported here some way, some shape, some form. It ended up in the store and I went and bought it. How'd it get to the store? Well, something that used oil, okay? So input costs to oil are everywhere, in every single product. And that's a problem for goods inflation, specifically services as well, most likely. That's also not great. Um, although, you know, uh, goods, you could see the inflation start to pop up a little quicker because they could be a little bit quicker to raise prices if those input costs really do start to rise. Nonetheless, that is problematic. Now, the situation that we're currently faced with, I'll just read some of the top headlines that are coming out today. It says, it says, U.S. Intel said to indicate Iran could strike Israeli soil in the next 24 to 48 hours. So 
Uh, there's There's been talk, speculation that this is going to happen after the markets close today, which, you know, uh, wouldn't wouldn't be too surprising just considering that timing um, after the markets close is when a lot of things tend to uh, happen. OK, and over a weekend um, more specifically. And this came out five hours ago. U.S. Issue, issues travel warning for Israel with Iran attack believed to be imminent says U.S. warns threat of significant Iranian attack on Israel that remains vi that remains viable. And you've had co comments come out from the leader of Iran basically talking about just this, how there's, there's going to be this attack on Iranian so soil. And Iran even went as far as to warn the U.S. to stay out of the fight with Israel or face attacks on our troops. So that is seen as really taking it a step further. And I think that's why the markets are reacting the way that they are today. Now, the Fed did also comment on the situation. I want to be clear. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. The biggest negative outcome from this is if Iran attacks Israel, fine. Okay, there's, there's not really a huge implication for the markets in that. If Israel attacks back, and then you get into this larger conflict, then you start to get upward pressure um, on oil that is actually material, right? Maybe less traffic through the Strait of Hormuz, which is, you know, or would be very problematic. So I don't know how far this thing's going to go. Uh, Iran could just do a show of force without really doing much. And, you know, that would just be it, right? And maybe there wouldn't need to be a, another response from Israel. We'll see. This post came out. From Israel, it says Israel is bracing for a worst case scenario that U.S. officials believe could materialize within just hours. The possibility of a direct attack on Israeli soil by Iran in retaliation for a strike against two for a strike almost two weeks ago that killed seven Iranian military officers that came out uh, at eight o'clock in the morning this morning, Eastern Standard Time. So uh, like six hours ago or so. And uh, it was from CBS. Yeah, not a great sounding headline to kick off your trading day. But um, you do have possibly some interceptions of drones. It says hostile aircraft infiltration in northern Israel near Lebanese border. You uh, are getting some comments from Hezbollah as well. It looks like they might be in on the action. That's not great. Fed Goldsby, he spoke today and he weighed in on the situation. It says, um, it says, Fed Goldsby, the Middle East instability is a wild card for the Fed in terms of oil prices and gas. A negative supply shock is not good. And then he followed that up with, if PCE is reinflating, the Fed will stabilize prices. So affirming higher for longer will not be in a rush to cut rates at all. So this is the biggest thing that is really negatively affecting the markets today and here's the last uh quote for for this whole israel iran situation it says an american official told al Zira, we are moving additional military capabilities to the region to enhance regional deterrence and measures to protect our forces so none of this looks good at all okay and the optics of this for oil and for broader markets just they're 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 not pretty OK, but what's also affecting the markets today is you did have bank earnings. You had JP Morgan, you had Citibank, you had Wells Fargo, you had BlackRock, Progressive and State Street that all reported earnings today. Now, JP Morgan, and I, I warned about this previously here on the channel, but JP Morgan is down about five and a half percent. They actually came in and beat their earnings estimates for EPS and top line revenue. But the guidance for 2024 was light. JP Morgan said they expect net interest income of around 90 billion, which is essentially unchanged from previous wordings. The markets were looking for a guidance raise of about two to three billion on this uh, net interest income number. So stocks down almost. 6%. Uh, same for City. City had similar uh, kind of uh, small misses here and there. Overall, uh, just not very great, right? Commentary and uh, guidance. City is also down about 3% today. And this was really the start 
of earnings season. Now, when you think about our markets quite logically here, the, to start 2024 and the, the rally we've really seen from the beginning of November throughout the end of December, there were a couple different reasons to be bullish on stocks. There was the Fed's going to cut rates soon. Economy is holding up. Inflation is falling. And you're going to have earnings growth. There was a strong bull thesis at the start of 2024. What happened? Stocks rallied big time, aggressive. One of the you know uh, top 5% um, market tier rallies we have ever seen before. Rallied in a very short amount of time. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. But what's happened in 2024? Fed's not going to be cutting nearly as much as we thought. Inflation is higher than expected. We have these renewed geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. And, well, the start of earnings season, not looking so great with the banks. The only real bull thesis there is left on our markets is earnings are going to come in good. Like, we started off 2024 with the expectation of 11% EPS growth for the S&P 500 this year and about 10% growth for next year. Now, you're only expecting about 5% EPS growth. So estimates have actually came down quite a bit, about 50%. Markets haven't reacted to it. That's pretty common. 5% is, is still growth, and I think that's why the markets didn't react much to that. But, I mean, if earnings come in bad they, or just not great or even in line with estimates, it's likely not good enough, and the markets will likely sell off. That's why I was paying very close attention to the banks because I think the banks were um, a, 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 a big part of this, right? If the consumer is going to spend money and drive earnings growth, you want to see the banks do well because they are the ones that would you know benefit a lot from that as well. So I think you're in a very dangerous, vulnerable position. I think uh, the markets are on very um, wobbly stilts as of right now. So these are really the main um, stories today. You can also see that China apparently told AMD and Intel uh, to, well, they told companies in China uh, to remove these foreign chips from their operation. So a little bit of bad news for semiconductors as well. Throw that in there. And uh, here you have it. NASDAQ down 1.6%. Russell down about 2%. S&P down 1.4%. The Dow is down 1.2%. The VIX is up about 20% today. At one point, you were up almost 30% today, uh, but still 20% in the VIX in a single day. Yeah. That is uh, that's that's pretty incredible. And it really just shows there was not a lot of downside put protection on people's portfolios as of, you know, before today. So there's definitely a rush to sell some stocks to hedge other stocks heading into this weekend, which could be a very volatile weekend as far as geopoliticals. Now, what you're actually seeing today as well is pretty interesting. Ten year Treasury yields are down about eight basis points. TLT. Um, is rising. That's essentially what it means. TLT is up about 1%. This looks like a fear move, a, a rush to safety. And you see this a lot when you start to get bad news or when markets get fearful. And when you see these kind of fear moves, it's notable because who's moving TLT? Retail investors are not moving TLT. They're not moving the bond market. Big money is moving the bond market. So when you see this kind of reaction, it's, it doesn't look good, okay? It looks like markets may see more downside from here. Oil is also up roughly about 1% today, which makes sense. USO is up 0.4%, breaking out to a uh, uh, what looks like a new high for the last year. And uh, this is really at a very important level. If, if you break out from here, that's definitely not going to be good for the path ahead um, for inflation. You also had gold today. Um, if we go ahead and pull up GLD, you had gold that gapped up pre-market, rallied into the first like two hours of trading, and then just completely sold off. Um, gold, whenever it's this volatile, volatile, is never a good thing. And gold is one of those, those asset classes that tends to do well when there's a lot of fear, but doesn't at the same time right? When there's a lot of fear before anything happens, people tend to go into gold. When things actually hit the fan and, you know, things go bad, then you tend to see gold actually sell off. So you're seeing gold sell off and it's been very volatile. 
Maybe that does mean a larger sell-off for the markets could be coming. I'm not sure, but this move in gold has been parabolic. It's been basically vertical uh, ever since late February. And it's almost like someone somewhere knew something was about to hit the fan in the market. So we'll see. If you take a look at the NASDAQ, you are under your 20-day moving average. That is your yellow line here. You found support at your 50-day moving average. That is sitting at 437.41. We'll see if we close above that into the end of the day today if we're, or if we fall under that. If we fall under that, then I think you're heading uh, down to about 420 on the triple Qs. And I think you could fall even more than that if you consider earnings come in, you know, not so great or maybe in line with estimates. Markets are pricing in a lot of good news, even to, to meet the estimates but not exceed them is likely going to be bad news at this point. A fall to that 200 day moving average could put you back down to about 390 on the triple Qs. And don't be surprised if something like that were to happen but i do think the 100 day moving average that's really a base case as of right now for this downside and that would still be downside of roughly four percent from here um, once we get to that level then we'll see what happens next but i do think four percent of additional downside from here is uh likely at this point you know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section if you have additional details to provide provide them down below in the comment section you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and i will see you in the next one